Good evening, everybody. Two Witnesses Live, Watchful and I here tonight to talk with you beautiful people. How are you doing tonight, Watchful? Uh, you muted yourself, Watchful. Good evening, everybody. Two <laughs> Witnesses Live. Sorry, guys, Watchful technical difficulties. Um, Joel uh, messaged me about an hour and a half ago and said he fell ill. And so we're going to have to really kind of talk about his dream. He gave me some information on it, but he had been fighting either COVID or the flu. So I hope he's okay. Um, he was excited to get on the show. But, you know, when you get sick, you get sick. Uh, watchful, um, my screen says the guest has muted themselves. It says you've muted yourself is what it says on this end. So, oh, how is everybody doing tonight while we sort out our technical difficulties? Let me uh, sort out things here, guys. Hey, Watchful, sorry. There you go. You had me in the green room, brother. Oh, it. I'm sorry. Right. You went in the green room. Yeah, we were talking to the very last second before we started the show. Normally, we have uh, about five or ten minutes of prep, but we were <laughs> on a telephone call, literally, and realized the show was in a matter of minutes. So, yeah. but anyways, we're here. We're here. And yeah. um, I think... Um, Joel is sick. He messaged me a little while ago, said that he felt like he was coming down with COVID or the flu. Mm. Um, he's been fighting something off for like a month. He was really sick for about two weeks straight, like so bad yeah. that he had to get on um, uh, steroid shots or whatever those things are to try to, <sighs> but he's been getting hammered with something. And uh, that's rough. Oh, it is. He, um, well, anybody, anybody out there who's uh, especially good at uh, healing prayers, Joel could definitely use your prayers. We'll pray for him too. Yeah, it's um, about two years ago uh, when COVID first started. Was it was two or three years ago? He, him, and I both ended up with COVID, but ended up with long COVID. We both mm. were sick for almost six months. Did you get the lung thing too? Um, I don't know what like it was. Wheezy, wheezy no, I, and hard to breathe. I did for about two weeks. Uh, for about okay. two weeks, it really frightened me. I couldn't get out of the chair. I lost my sense of smell and taste. Both me and my wife mm -hmm. did. We literally mm -hmm. put buckets of bleach under each other's nose to say, can you smell that? I'm like, can't smell it. Dang. Normally, it, you know, the bleach would just knock you out. Um. But I got over it, but for literally six months, um, I didn't feel deathly ill, but I took probably two naps a day for six months and just really felt awful. It, it was yeah. probably the worst six months of my life. Yeah, we've had similar bouts in our family too. Um, huh. Right before even COVID was, before COVID was even a thing, uh, I spent three days in a chair exactly like you described. Yeah, that's tough. Do you you said before COVID? Mm hmm Yeah, it was I think it was like um I think it was in the beginning of it was in December. It was before it was a big thing. I, I often joke that I was probably patient zero. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> oh. My wife. My wife's like, No, you weren't. You just she's yeah. like, You just had the stomach flu or something. <laughs> Lily, uh, Lily, Annie, I, I, I'm horrible with names. Miss Sterling said that she was in the hospital with it and had pneumonia. That's scary. Yikes. That's really scary because from what I understand, only five or 10% of the people that went on ventilators actually came off of them. That is yeah. super scary. Yeah. Weren't they finding that the people were actually doing better in open air and in sunlight than they were on the ventilators? Yeah, the it's it's really really scary and sad to read the statistics mm. now based off of um, what happened. It, it was really interesting. 
I remember reading on several news sources and from independent media that the hospitals would actually get paid like a commission. They would get financial compensation right. for for patients that had that sickness versus something else. So they would be marking it no matter what it was, even if it closely resembled it. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... It, it it never made sense to me though why they pushed the ventilator so hard, knowing that for the most part it was a death sentence. That's- you know, I've gone back and forth on that too, and I almost I, I honestly think it was a combination of fear and stupidity. I I think it was spiritual. It was pushed by the principalities, the powers of the air. You know, I think that whatever yeah. happened. That was, it was a spiritual behind it, but the people who are actually doing things, I honestly have a hard time, you know, attributing any like intelligence, like this was their, this was their, their plan. I don't know, maybe at a higher level, like, you know, Soros type people, those people who are ahead, who are like following, you know, we read about the, you know, these, uh, these prophecies and visions and dreams and stuff that happened in 1933. We, we, uh, what was that? There was a, um, there was something that we posted in, in our chat today um, that is a really common uh, uh, re- recording about like what it's going to be like when they take over the world. That's the kind of thing. But those kind of people, I think, are the ones who are in charge, who are thinking these things through. I think everybody else is a dumb puppet. Yeah. I, I remember the 1984 George Orwell? He, is that what it was? Um, yeah. I don't know if that specific item you were talking about was was him but i'm sure folks in the chat are are familiar with the 1984 george orwell Uh, a lot of um pastors talk about um his teachings because he was teaching this in 84 but just about everything he was saying then has come to fruition Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's it's, the the thing I was referring to is if i were the devil by paul harvey it was a recording from 1965 oh yeah 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 yeah, that, yeah, that's about a week ago, but that was really, really good. Yeah, I mean, that was 40, 50 years ago, and the dude nailed it. Yeah, like it's like a playbook, right? Like this stuff is like, you know, destroying the family, causing divorces, uh, you know, giving money and making money completely worthless and stuff like that. It's just like that's the playbook that they're following. I think that the, the I don't know if the people who are in charge are like cognizantly aware that that's what they're doing, that they're playing out this playbook. Maybe they are, I don't know, but I prefer to think of them as dumb puppets because it's so hard to imagine how somebody could, could knowingly send somebody to a death sentence, which I guess world leaders do that all the time with wars. Wars are so evil when, when, when they're just trying to reduce the population or make money, you know, what's that common saying? Wars, war is uh, the best way to make money. It's sad. You know, yeah. I, I'm glad you uh, actually mentioned um, what you just said about the puppets. I have been doing a lot of digging on Prince uh, King Charles, but not on anything recent. His involvement goes back to 1965, him and Klaus Schwab. They have been working on this project for 40 mm. years. And I'm not sure if folks are aware of this. Klaus's father and his family were highly involved in Hitler's uh, Final Solution program. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You guys Google that. Look into Klaus Schwab's history and his family, how he was tied to the SS and a part of the Final Solution. And Mm. it will start, start all making sense when you make that connection because... Yeah, from 1940 to 19, you know, 45, they literally tried to e- exterminate an entire race. Right. And it's, and it, 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 he could have, and what's interesting is that uh, Hitler could have been that generation's quote, quote, little horn antichrist. Because I've. Well, what, was it, um, was it, uh, um, who we you just did a show where they were talking about the uh the Amal- Am- Amalekites Amal- ah, I can't even remember yeah, what yeah. it was 
what was that? That was the show with uh, Sean and um, his friend, Dr. Uh, Skip with Skip, right? Yeah. Where he was talking about the, um, the every generation was going to, um, they're going to have to deal with the Amalekites, right? Something like yeah. that. And then because yeah. he associated that with that's what the, the Nazi um, conflict was. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're right. And I, I don't know the technical term about it, but in every generation, um, and even Jesus references that that yeah. name. I can't remember because uh, Jesus called it a different name, and it could be the same. And Skip could have been referencing something um, in Hebrew, uh, mm -hmm. but the but yes, it, it, there's it's it's the seed. It really what it boils right. down to. It's that seed exactly. Um, and every generation has that seed. And it's becoming more and more clear, though, right now in present day, because you can literally, um, within a few minutes of talking to anyone, tell what where they fall. There's there's right. there's no left or right or center or or whatever your political affa affiliation is. It, it these days it is simply you are a child of light or you are a child of darkness. That's it for me. That's how it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I definitely think there's something to that with uh, if, if I if I'm remembering correctly, uh, if it was Skip and what he was saying is that, you know, God has said that there will always be conflict in every generation. That seems to me like, you know, that that coincides with what I was taught as a child that the end of the, that the adversary raises up, you know, I was taught that it is he raises up an antichrist in every generation. And that seems to be what we've been talking about, too. Uh, that every generation is basically prepared for this seed war, prepared for what's been written about in Revelation. And I think we finally hit that point to where it's real. So it's like they've been practicing for generations and it's like it's here now. So this is really interesting because that tells us that we should be looking to that history to know what to expect. Yeah, um, and it reminds me of the Genesis entry. Um, it, you know it better than I do, where uh, he steps on his head or bruises his heel. I forget what, how that goes, but he says sure. before that that he will put amnesty between... Yep. I, I forget how it goes, but I think that's uh, essentially what you're talking about. Yeah, enmity between your, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. It will yeah. bruise... He will... the the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman basically. Yeah. And the reason yeah. I bring that up is I've been, um, I'm not sure if you, anybody in the chat watched the Enoch video that I posted. It's a really good summary. It's like a 40 minute video that essentially tells you every book of Enoch and the book of Noah all in a summary video. Uh, it, it, it's great, but they go into, it, it goes into detail about that topic right there into much greater detail. Um, it, right on. It, uh, yeah, it was really worth listening to. I've listened to it a few times, and I put the playback speed at like 1.25 or 1.5, mm -hmm. and you can really get through the whole video in 20 minutes if you change the playback speed. But <laughs> nice. Oh, I think you posted that twice today. I never got around to actually to listening to that one. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. It, it was such a good video because all the other times that I've tried to digest the book of Enoch, and it's a, it's an all day, you got to commit right. for several days. But this guy, he touched on every hard, pretty much every important aspect and summarized mm. it. And one thing I've missed in the past whenever I've read the book of Enoch is that he connected everything with the Anaki or uh, what is that? An Anaki. Yeah, um, it's it all connects to that and the Egyptians. Um, mm, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, it was really fascinating. Matter of fact, I watched a video today that I posted on our social media where they discovered some new hieroglyphics in the pyramids of Egypt, and. Greg, uh, watch. Well, I can't wait until you watch this. Th this guy yeah. um, makes the connection between Leonardo da Vinci's um, studies and the pyramids, and there's actually a connection. Uh, it gets really deep. Uh, huh. it, it, he connects everything with the stars and da Vinci, and there's, and a, there's a coded message 
that has been hidden for um, thousands of years. And the only way he was able to see it was with a special like black light on the walls. And then the message showed up. And no one has ever in history seen this before. Sweet. I love stuff like that. That stuff's oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, what do you got for news? Oh my God. Today has been a massive news day. Where do we start? Uh, let's start with the, um, let's start with the shootings and then get into some political stuff. Okay. Uh, So there was a a shooting near Kansas city, super bowl, the victory rally. Uh, it looks like there was 21 people injured. We're seeing more and more of this violence. Didn't we just watch a video of, uh, yesterday we were talking about the, uh, the, uh, the, um, concert, the, uh, the black con. What was it called? The conservative con, uh, something like oh, that. Oh, um, the African American um, convention. Um, yeah, yeah. Convention. It's actually scheduled all over the country, but it was in California that one. Yeah, I know. I you know I know violence is a pretty common thing, but there has been a drastically increase, a drastic increase in violence lately. I mean, there's really there's is. been an, an an increase in sh- in just fear based shootings. Uh, there's been stampedes. Uh, there's been, uh, you know, we had the uh, the shooter at Lakewood just a couple days ago, and it, and it's not just that these are actually in the news. Uh, th- there's actually, you know, these things are on the increase. There is more crime and more violence. It'd be interesting to see the statistics on that. It, it really on the, would on be. the actual. On the actual, we should look that up. We should we should get the actual statistics on that because I know for a fact that it's going up. I just don't know the numbers, and I want to know the numbers on it. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, there was another shooting. Um, right, Stephanie asked, so. "Hey, did you see Patricia's super chat question?" No, I didn't. Let me go back here. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Um, Question: What is the difference between being on the third seal and being in the tribulation? Do you think we are in the tribulation? I just got COVID for the first time. The virus is weird. Oh yeah, this sounds like one for me. Uh, so, what is the difference between being on the third seal and being in the tribulation? So, my personal opinion on this is that so here's the thing: tribulations have been happening for centuries. So, there's a distinction between what we call tribulation and the great tribulation that we're referring to in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. The great tribulation is the one that's so bad that if God didn't shorten it, no flesh would survive. So it's going to be so bad that it's never been as bad on the earth, and it will never, ever be as bad on the earth. So it's a it's a distinct tribulation that's prefaced with the word great. So I don't think that seal number three is the great tribulation. I think it's just tribulation. And my personal opinion is that it's uh, it lines up with the beginning of sorrows, which is talked about in Matthew 24, when it says you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, language, you know, uh, ethnos against ne- ethnos, and, you know, all the things that are listed there. It says that th- these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I do understand that there is an argument that the beginning of sorrows has been going since Jesus, you know, was crucified. So there's there's an argument for that because you can make the argument that there's been wars and rumors of wars forever. However, uh, we know from Jewish thinking that there's never just one answer. They think in cycles. They think they they think in patterns. You know, something happening over and over again. I think we're in. I think that uh, we are in that in the last cycle for the wars and rumors of wars. And I think that specifically it is the beginning of sorrows, which leads up to the great tribulation. Uh, so the seal numbers one through three are the beginning of sorrows. Seal number four, I believe, is probably the start of the great tribulation but i don't i think what i've observed from the seals being open is that they're the beginning events not the culmination of events so things like you know these shootings and the invasions across the borders i think that and this is why i say i'm not sure if seal number four has been opened or not is it could be opened but we haven't gotten to the point yet to where things are really really bad because seal number four could last for a period of time and things could be very bad during, you know, so for example, say things start to get really bad in April. 
um, you know, that, that could be when things really start to ramp up. Maybe whatever we've been anticipating starts to pop off. You know, somebody yeah. pushes the button for nukes, you know, yeah. something similar to October 7th starts to happen worldwide. Uh, that may not necessarily mean that that's the day that seal number four opens. It could be. It could be that that's when seal number four opens, but I have a feeling that we've probably opened seal number four since October 7th and we're continuing to build to where it gets really, really bad. And it will probably proceed even through seal number five into seal number six. So to answer your question, my personal opinion is the, is the great tribulation probably goes from the middle of seal number four all the way to seal number six, because it's seal number six that it starts to transition into God's wrath to where you have the, the bull judgments and the trumpet judgments. And I think that that's probably a better location given what we've been through for uh, the rapture. So this is one of the reasons why we're, we're kind of leaning away from the pre-tribulation rapture is because we've been going through tribulation and it hasn't happened. And it looks like we're, we may very well go through some more tribulation and my hope is, is that we're unkillable. You know what I mean? I'm hoping that we go through this great tribulation and it's more of a time of proclaiming the truth and people being, you know, agitated and angry and the, and the devil spirits just going rampant, continuing to, to kill and cause chaos. I'm not looking forward to the to, to killing and the chaos, but I'm looking forward to it. If we're here that, you know, we're supernaturally protected and we have that freedom to, to, you know, share the gospel, talk about our, our Lord and savior, you know, and, and maybe have that power and authority over the rain and the bugs, whatever that means could be figurative, could be literal. So if we're here during that period of time, I, I you know, I want to look at it from a positive perspective, being a believer, knowing that we're saved, knowing that we're protected, that there are promises that we're going to be, you know, saved from the wrath to come, that there's promises that will be kept from the trials coming on the whole world. In order for that to fit, I'm hoping it's that, that you know, we are empowered th during that time if we're here. Um, you know, if we're not here, it, that would be great too. If we're, you know, raptured away and caught up and prepared somewhere else while things, while the great tribulation happens, maybe Moses and Elijah do come down to earth and they do literally breathe fire out of their mouth and control the weather and the bugs in order to save the last remnant who haven't believed, you know, because the, uh, the scripture does say that, uh, the blind, the Jews are blind in part until the fullness of the Gentiles come. So you know, maybe maybe it is the case where the two witnesses, you know, once the you know once the fullness of the Gentiles has come, the you know they're taken away, and then the two witnesses come to start working on the Jews. Maybe that's the Great Tribulation. There's a lot of stuff that we don't have solid answers for. We can just speculate and theorize, uh, but we we have stuff that's been happening that that uh, we can draw conclusions on what what things could be like in the future. Does that make sense? Boy, I really went on a long rant, but yeah. So since our last two guests, well, not the last two, but after having Craig Bong and then Mark on, I've did a lot of digging and it, it was very interesting because I, I went back several hundred years and almost every major event with a full moon happened on the Shemitah cycle and mm. at the start or end of the Jubilee year. And I almost wonder if what happened in 2019 and 2020 and whatnot were uh, shadows of the seals, like how uh, Craig put it, because I didn't see any significant Jewish um, Hebrew uh events on the Hebrew calendar. Um, it's, everything that is happened with great impact uh, happened on like Hanukkah or Passover or one of these he, he, um, Jewish holidays. But what if the tribulation started on October 7th, the, the first seal because it was the the last and first of the jubilee and it was it was a really important date 
otherwise yeah, I, I think that actually lines up with what i've been saying and that's why i'm saying i'm not sure but that would be that would actually line up with my research with the eclipses so if that was seal number four and the start of the great tribulation um, we could literally be living through the promise of um, you know being the church of philadelphia being kept from the trials coming on the whole world yeah so that could be the you, case i need to send you what mark sent me he um and I think his calendar might be right because um, it's hard to um, argue when the moons, the stars, the sun, the Jewish holidays, and the events all match. Um, right. And, and I didn't even think about that until he explained it. Uh, yeah. I need to send that to you because it, it may add confluence to stuff that you've already been talking about. It was... Um, okay extremely interesting i i, I know someone asked a question I, here go ahead i i do oh. like the idea of the uh shadows from 2019 uh from the perspective of if you know if i am th both things can actually be true to where the seals could be open and they could be shadows because the first half of the seven seals being opened it stands to reason that they would be significantly less than the last three and a half. So if the first three and a half could literally be shadows of the last three and a half to where the last three and a half are the really bad ones. Yeah. So if, from my understanding, when, when things actually kick off, the two witnesses are supposed to appear, whether it's two people or it's two groups of people, like all these YouTubers and folks like us that are really pushing the gospel hard, but that's supposed to be a three and a half year period. And then, things shift gears and gets really bad for the believers. And hopefully that would oh, yeah. be when the rapture would be. Um, but I tell you what, after studying the book of Enoch, they it really, really does not support a pre-trib rapture in the book of Enoch because it, it talks about how the dead in Christ will rise at the final judgment. It references this many, many, many times how the yeah. the in that day uh, will be the judgment and the dead in Christ will rise. Whereas, you know, it, isn't it if the pre-trib rapture, the dead rise also for for the rapture? Yeah, the dead in Christ rise first and then those who are alive and remain are caught up together with them in the clouds. Yeah. yeah. So the book of Enoch is really clear about that event happening at time of judgment. And what was really interesting is it talks about the judgment for being solely for the principalities and powers, which is really interesting. It doesn't yeah. really talk too much about um, individual people and their judgment. It really focuses on these evil spirits and principalities. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I translated that correctly, but. Uh, no, I think you're right. I mean, it, it, it's pretty clear even in, 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 you know, the New Testament that the, I think it's Jesus that, um, I think, is it in Matthew 24 where he talks about the judgment for the fallen angels? Yeah. Because um, uh, it, it mentions the, uh, that it's been prepared from the foundation of the world for the fallen angels and for those, because it does lump some people in there when he's separating uh, people and and you know they've been judged. They go to the same place where the fallen angels go. Um, yeah, you know yeah. what's interesting about the uh, the resurrection in the Book of Enoch is it's one of the things that leads towards my opinion of it being after the three and a half years. So basically the midway point. So assume that uh, the one thousand two hundred and sixty days starts on the festival of first fruits. The Day of Atonement um, would would be the start of the three days, the three and a half days where they're dead. That could, if, if the two witnesses are groups of people, then, then the stuff that talks about those who overcome. So those who are alive and remain would be those would be the ones who overcome that period of time. If that's part of the great tribulation. So if it's two groups of people who are, you know, um, sealed and they have, you know, power and authority, then those, you know, maybe, maybe they're not all unkillable. Maybe they're unkillable because the group's just too big. Mm -hmm. uh, we often say, you know, that there's, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't saved in the world, but 
there's also a lot of people who probably are. I know there's you know, at least 25% of the world, I think it is, are Christians, right? So 25% of the world believe in, uh, have a covenant with, you, with uh, the Messiah, right? They're, they believe that he's their Lord. So imagine if 25% of the world are the two witnesses or even a percentage of them, even, you know, say you divide that by seven, it's still a really large number of people when you're talking about 9 billion people on the planet. So, you know, 25% of 9 billion is a couple of billion. And then if you take a, if you divide that by seven, if you were to divide it by the seven churches, just to say, and you know, two groups out of that is still going to be hundreds of millions of people. So say if there's hundreds of millions of people that are, that fall into that category of the two witnesses, then, you know, they could be, and, and if they receive any kind of power and authority, maybe they receive the same, you know, maybe the, the miracles that we saw during Jesus's day to where, you know, if say the, the abyss has been open and people are possessed, um, because you ever wonder the, the spirits that are sent to the abyss when the ones that beg him not to be, the, be sent out, you, you imagine, this is something that I thought about recently. And I think we've talked about this before on the show to where when spirits are cast out, they're sent to the abyss. And if that abyss is being opened and they're coming back and possessing people again, you're talking about reliving the days of the Messiah. So if we're reliving the days of the Messiah, that could be part of the great tribulation to where you've just got people that are just outright possessed by, you know, potentially thousands of evil spirits. So if we're given power and authority in order to cast them out, um, and you know, and it's millions of people, then you're not going to be able to kill millions of people. Maybe that's what it means when it talks about those who overcome. So out of the millions of people, those who overcome will be saved or even those who die during that period of time. Uh, or maybe they even die at the very end, you know, cause if it's the mm. two witnesses go 1,260 days and then they die for three and a half days and then they're caught up into heaven. That gives a completely different perspective that from what we've considered in the past to where if it's just two guys, but if it's two groups, you could be talking about literally millions of people who have been what have been prophesying for 1,260 days. Yeah. Um, um, and I think I, that falls right at seal number six when we have like the stuff with the earth going on and, the, you know, all that stuff that we've been looking at. Yeah. Um, I think that's... Um, I think you're being generous with that number. I think there may be 25% that say they are. <laughs> I, I think I'm being very generous. I think 23% of them are lukewarm and are the folks that go to church on Sunday and don't think about Christ any other day of the week except that two hours in the morning when they're standing there in service and singing. I think you've yeah. got two or 3% that are ones that have a daily relationship with Christ. And yeah. I, I it could know. be as I low as hundred. It could be as low as one hundred and forty-four thousand. Yeah, yeah. And someone said I look tired. Yeah, I'm tired. I. It's one of you know, it's uh, I only sleep two or three hours a night. That's just how how I do it. Um, I, I it's not that I don't want to. I just don't get tired. And then, uh, you know, having four small kids, and typically I'm the one. Um, with the kids all the time. My wife has a, a horse farm that she's always tending to. So it's, it's typically just me most of the time. So kids can drain you, you know, uh, but it is what it is. I just, I need a nap, but I'm good. Um, someone asked about Russia. What's our thoughts about Russia and the news that was released today on that? Oh yeah. But for, before we get into that, I just want to say a happy birthday to Skylar. Uh, Ty Bowen asked us to give a shout out to Skylar. So Skylar, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Happy birthday, All right. Skylar. All right. Now we can get into the news. Yes. So Russia. So this was this. Um, if if they're referring to what I think they're referring to, Russia sent a rock, rocket up on February 9th with an unknown payload. And there's speculation that they sent nukes up or supersonic missiles. But as far as we know, it's unknown what they did and what they sent up there. Is that what they're referring to? I don't know. Uh, they didn't elaborate. They just said, did you hear about Russia? Yeah. Um, that's the that's what I read about today. It just it was coming out today. I know I caught it on Marfugel. Marfugel was speculating that if they sent like an EMP up there, hmm. the, the kind of damage that they could cause by, you know, detonating an EMP in, at certain altitudes. You know, um, 
I don't think Putin's the aggressor. I think the more and more I read and study in this, I, I almost think that NATO and our country are the bad guys. I feel like we're living in the belly of the beast. I do it's, too. I think that he just wants to be left alone in his, and not have his uh, borders invaded. It, and I really think that NATO is the, the true enemy. They are the terrorists of the world. They just, they paint a different picture. They are ran by the WEF, ran by who? Mm -hmm. And I think everybody in charge of our government is just the puppets from, you know, the WEF, Klaus Schwab, King Charles, um, and all those goons. I think they're just doing as they're told because they are single-handedly just um, tearing down our country so that they can essentially force everybody to be completely reliant on mm -hmm. them for everything by destroying all the farms, reducing, you know, the, the food output, uh, making things that it's almost impossible to sustain owning a home. Yet my wife went and got uh, Valentine's Day stuff for the four kids. And normally, you know, she can go and get all that stuff for 40 or 50 bucks to get everything that she needs, candies and little trinkets and whatnot. And she spent like two or $300. I was like, hey. Ooh, mercy. Yeah. yeah, I've just yeah, I've no, seen, it's been like that for us too. It, there's just been a drastic difference in cost of living, and I don't think it's going to yeah. slow down. And I'm hoping, yeah. I'm praying that the, we actually have this election in November. And I'm hoping there's yeah. a, a, a change of power. And if we do, we could see three or four years of revival. And, you know, the the evil being persecuted and you know mm. I, I just a grand revival with those in christ i could see that happening and then the hammer wouldn't that be a nice positive twist like we've all been thinking doom and gloom for the great tribulation what if it's like the world's biggest revival and the persecution is on evil because it talks about the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of the uh, our god and his messiah and his lamb his messiah uh, yeah, wouldn't that be a awesome you know, I only think that because everybody is, you know, typically turn of events happen when people least expect it and typically not what they predict. And everybody's yeah. predicting this awful doom and gloom and, and bad things. You know, what if it was a grand revival? And, and I've heard other people talk about this grand revival. What if there was? I mean, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you know, I, you know, you could be on to something like that. Uh, you know, we often say that we think, you know, the second beast is like the Catholic Church or Sardis is a Catholic Church. We speculate these different things. Maybe we've got it completely wrong. Maybe it's governments. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the Catholic Church is just Sardis. You know, maybe we're giving them too much credit being like a beast, you know, first beast or a second beast. Uh, maybe the second beast is, you know, NATO. Maybe it's this conglomeration of governments that are taking over the world. That speaking of that reminds me, guys who's watching, need you guys to get on the website and set up profiles. I've been watching how they are cracking down on censorship. I don't know how much longer we'll be able to freely talk about any of this stuff. They, um, it is a war on information. It, it yeah. literally is. I've been reading in detail about this. The powers that be, the principalities, they are scrambling. Because right now they're losing control and they're losing control because of the information, the truth that is getting out. And this being an election year, they are going to take drastic measures to reduce the truth from getting out because the truth yeah. is what's making them lose. So folks, if you haven't been to the website and registered, that matter if you get a, you know, whatever you want to do, you just need to get on there just so that we don't lose you guys and your connection in case things do fall apart. That was our whole intention of building yep. the website for when they start to crack down on censorship, that everybody that we're connected with will still have a means to communicate with us. And, you know, the yeah. website, it'll grow over time. We're going to add some things when we uh, have all the logistics figured out. But I just want to make sure that everybody's connected with us there. But for now, we're going to continue to stream um, everywhere we can. I just, I feel like they're going to drop the hammer eventually. Yeah, I agree. I think they're th th that's coming. They're going to probably knock us off YouTube. We want you want we want to make sure that you that we can reach out to you, contact you, 
um, that you can still find us. Uh, we're, we're spreading out into all the different platforms. So if something happens to us on YouTube, you'll be able to find us wherever else we are, whether it's X or, you know, rumble, although rumble, uh, I'll be honest with you, the guys there, I have direct connections to them. They've been completely ignoring me. Uh, <laughs> that's why we're not really doing anything on rumble right now. So I, I think X might be our saving grace. That one seems to be the one that's consistent right now. But uh, yeah, you don't you don't have to sign up for anything. Uh, the site is completely free. We do have different membership levels in there, but that's purely those are to support us in our mission. You know, we want to build a studio so that we can fly guests in and you know interview in person. We want to you know ramp up our Bible giveaway program for anybody who needs access to the written scripture and writing. Uh, we've got big plans. We we want to add you know community and build our own social network and have our own channels, we're going to turn that thing into a power powerhouse for God. Uh, all you need to do is just go sign up there so that we don't lose you guys, so that you, can, you don't lose us and you'll always be able to find us. Hey, two people in the comments said, I couldn't register on your website because it said my email address was already being used as registered and it's the only email address I have. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, huh. email me at um, info at twowitnesseslive.com or help. No, help. Do it, uh, Send it to help. Yeah, and we'll get you set up. And if you don't remember that, the, there's a link in the description to our emails. We'll make sure that it gets to Watchful. Yeah, get us to one of the, any one of our emails. We got like five or six of them right now. But we will help uh, any one of you guys uh, getting registered. You know, it, yeah. like he said, it's free. If you guys want to support our mission, great. We'll we'll gladly accept. But we want to stay in touch with everybody. So we just want you to go there so you can stay in touch with us. All right. Anyways, um, what else we got? All right. So uh, political stuff in the news, which I think is important that we should pay attention to. Uh -huh. uh, so the big one is what the West Virginia Attorney General, General is pushing uh, Kamala Harris to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Biden. So this comes shortly after the Department of Justice said that they are not going to persecute uh, pre the current president because they don't think he's mentally fit in order to stand trial. So uh, they're this is a big thing. They are acknowledging that there is an issue. And now the attorney general is getting on board and urging the vice presidents to invoke the 25th amendment. And if you're not aware what the 25th amendment is, that's the ability for, um, that enables them to remove a sitting president based on his diminished cognitive, cognitive abilities. So what could happen as a result of that. So we would have the first female president that we've ever had for the United States. And unfortunately, that's what Joel was going to come on and talk about. Uh, Joel uh, had mentioned to us that there was a prophecy from 1933 about the day that a woman becomes the president of the United States, that that is the, be that is the beginning of the end. Now, I don't think that's necessarily in a, in a sexist, misogynist um, mentality. But a prophecy meaning that it's about that time, and I don't even know. I, maybe she has she's playing a, a role in the demise of um, you know the, the United States. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until Joel comes on to uh, tell us more about that. I believe he also had a dream that he was going to share with us, um, but we're just going to have to wait. Uh, so, what do you think that means? Do you think that? we'll still have an election if she, if that does take place. I mean, we're still several months off from them actually from, from the actual election. Uh, Trump hasn't even picked his vice president yet. I think he's getting close. We have some uh, suspicions on who it's going to be, but they're up to something. I know that on much. one hand I could see it. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely up to something on one hand. I could see the revival coming from the election. Um, changing the the landscape in the United States. So I could see the great revival happening as a result. No, there's going to be people, if there's a great revival, there's going to be people blaming Trump for being the antichrist. I don't, it, it could be, but it could also be a great revival. Um, or we may never get to that point. You know, maybe Kamala Harris gives her power and authority 
authority to NATO, and then NATO takes control of the world. And then that's when we start to see the implementation of the mark of the beast, where you can't buy or sell unless you make some declaration, wear some mark, believe something. Or she just, you know, first day of office says peace and safety and boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that would. That but would it's clear. Twist. It's clear they're up to something. You know, they have defended the current administration um, to the teeth for years. And over the last few weeks, last month, they have totally shifted gears. They are planting and prepping and, you know, dropping seeds that something is in the works. Because that's all they talk about now. They're like, yeah, he's mentally incompetent. The DOJ says that blah, 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 blah. Just a bunch of hot air that comes out of their mouth. They're just gaslighting everybody. It's a bunch of, yeah. it's a bunch of BS. So I try to read between the lines to really get to the core of the truth. And unfortunately, you really can't do that with the mainstream media. But what you can do is pay attention to what they're talking about and know whatever they're pushing, it's not that. So you can eliminate whatever they're pushing is a plausible explanation. So you, what you take is, okay, whatever they're talking about is clearly a lie. What motivation and direction and what would benefit from this lie? And then that will point you in the direction of the most realistic truth. And then you take your independent media, what they're talking about, and then you study the WEF's website and they're always releasing agenda updates, especially that guy, whoever their their prophet is. They always are updating their plans and their agenda. So I take the independent media, the WEF's game plans, and the mainstream media's lies, and you tie it all together and you get some truth. And that's where I'm at right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I'm 100% on board with that. That's exactly, that sounds exactly right. You know, and the other interesting thing is today is uh, today they confirmed that the CIA illegally spied on Donald Trump when they were running, when he was running against Barack Obama. So it's interesting. They're starting to finally allow these things that we knew was true to actually come to light. So it looks like it's planned, man. It looks like, uh, I don't know. It looks like they're just following a script. It's like they've been suppressing, you know, evidence and knowledge of things for a period of time. And now they're just yeah. starting to let this stuff. Yeah. Servant Ole said, I always look tired. I am. It's, um, <laughs> it is what That's it short. is. Yeah. I, 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 I get up at 5 a.m., take all four kids to school. They go to different schools. I go to the gym. Then I go to my day job and hump it there until about, five or six in the afternoon and then come home prep for the show. And then here we are and then do it again. Here we are. But, but I, I enjoy it. You know, if I feel like it's my calling and eventually I won't have to do the day job. And, um, yeah. you know, as far as the children, I love my kids. So it's worth the sacrifice to make sure they have what they, what they need and being up in the morning to be with them, making the breakfast and whatnot, you know, sleep's overrated. <laughs> I know that's not the truth, but sleep when we're uh, dead. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I take a nap during the day. Sometimes I'll close the office door and, uh, pull out a pillow and, and take a nap on the couch in the office, but it is what it is. What do you do? Um, let's see. That's Go very, ahead. Very much like Elon Musk. He sleeps underneath his desk at his office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too much to do. There's just not enough time in the day. Uh, I, yeah. That's just how I feel. And I, I typically yeah, I can't do, I can't do two or three hours of sleep, but I, I do pretty darn good on five. Uh, so I usually try to stick to five. We go to bed really late here. My, our entire house. So there's five, six of us in the house. It doesn't settle down until about three o'clock in the morning. So I'm usually up by eight. That's usually my time. So five hours. Yeah. Someone said homeschool. Uh, yeah, I love the idea of homeschool, but that's actually hard to do. My wife did homeschool during COVID, and it was a lot of work. Um, I don't think I could do that. It's, you know, when it comes to details and stuff like that, Watchful is the one that handles that stuff behind the scenes. If I was handling legal and details and website and things that actually mattered that was all mechanically coming together it, everything would fall apart 
It's that's that's yeah. not my strong suit. Um, details and all that stuff is is what he's good at. I'm I'm the creative out of the bunch. So we it's a good fit. But here at the house, I couldn't do um, homeschooling. It's um, yeah, you're right. It, 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 public school does. It, it's not good. But I am very fortunate to live where I live, and I live in a very uh, conservative area in the southeast United States that's one of the most conservative. Uh, I live in a town that has required every homeowner to own a firearm. Uh, you walk around my there. town, you walk around my town, everybody has a gun on their hip. There is literally zero crime in my town. So the public schools here are actually pretty decent. Pretty decent. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, public schools here aren't where we're at, aren't decent. We have to homeschool. Uh, but my wife takes care of that. So uh, usually in the evenings, I'll sit down because she starts getting really tired and not wanting to think. So I usually come in and we'll sit down and we'll all do math together or something like that. But it's hard. It's a full day job. It you know, is. Homeschooling your kids. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I watched uh, my wife do it. And I was just like, man. Yeah. And you have to const at least my children. You you would have to constantly be on them, or else they would uh, get distracted. Oh yeah, she'd play games and watch TV all day long if we let her. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, somebody, we got a super chat here from uh, Anana Anon V. Uh, look into the two sides of darkness. It's all a fight to be in power in movies and music industry. It's depicted as Horus versus Seth, political right versus left in the bible it's the battle in revelation seventeen sixteen. yeah i think you're right i think you could boil it down to and you know that's why we often say there's only two choices heaven and hell that's really what we're saying is we're talking about light and darkness um but you know it's there's not just one answer for things obviously there's a lot more details involved but that's the essence of things is uh you know light and darkness it's interesting if you look in the bible um light was spoken into existence before the sun so what does that tell you about light yeah Someone in the chat said, don't drop my location. Look, it is what it is. I'm a public figure. Before I started doing this, I was a, a global award-winning wedding photographer, which I still do, but it, it, eh, I'm over that. I did it for 20, 22 years, so everybody knows who I am. All you have to do is Google me. There's a million things about me. I've lived in the same location for 20 years, so I'm here. Come and get me. I'm not bothered. You know, I have yeah. something that most don't have, and that's the armor of God. So good luck with coming to get me. But um, yeah. let's see. Um, someone else says something. I, for, I lost my track. Um, oh, there was this. Um, there was a police shooting. Man, I need to send you the video. So this this uh, police officer pulled over a vehicle. They got calls that this guy was. Uh, roaming around with a gun. He detained the guy, put him in the back of the cruiser. And then mm -hmm. an acorn fell off the tree, landed I on saw the, that. Landed yeah. on his police cruiser. He went down on the ground, dumped a whole clip into his own police cruiser, and then reloaded and did it again. And then on the radio said that he was hit. And there was no shooter. It was uh. all in his head. I missed that part. I didn't realize he radioed in that he he was hit. I heard about the the, the acorn and I heard about unloading the clips into the car, and uh, that there was somebody in the car. But man, oh man! Yeah, he was. He he put the subject in in the back seat, and was getting ready to do a pat down. Put on his gloves, and an acorn fell, hit the top of the cruiser. He thought it was a gunshot. He flew to the ground, dumped two magazines in the back of his cruiser. And radioed in that he was hit, and there was mm. nothing. Um, <laughs> that's a crazy story. That's uh, wow. Uh, I bet you he gets He's fired. On edge, man. <sighs> I don't know. It depends on who he was detaining. I guess if it was somebody that was dangerous and he had every right to be afraid, you would think he would have checked him for any kind of weapons. He should have known better. Uh, well, he, he did. Had, he did. It. He did an initial pat down and then cuffed him. And was coming back with gloves to do a deeper search. Um, but mm. my thing is this. If, if I was in the same position, just because I stay armed as well, I'm going to verify my threat. I'm not just going to dump a yeah. clip into wherever. I mean, this was in a public setting. There was cars everywhere and people walking around. You know, shot placement is key. You don't just 
dump a yeah. magazine into an area hoping that you take out your threat. That's horrible training. And I hope mm. that cop is listening. It's a um, wonder. Somebody mentioned PTSD is serious. I wonder if he had PTSD. You know, you're right. That it's it's not for us to to judge or assume. And I could be wrong for saying what I said, though. Yeah. You know, it's discharging your firearm. No, yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think you said anything that was wrong. I think you're right on. You know, verify your threat. Uh, you know. Yeah, he should have known better. Verify your threat. And I mean, I guess he did eliminate the threat if there was truly a threat. I don't know. That I, I I don't I don't know what the end result is. It's just discharging your firearm in public is uh, there could be kids hit in the distance. You know, mm -hmm. unless you have cited your threat. I mean, you just I don't know. Anyways, I'm not going to harp on that. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so Joel messaged me and said that he had this dream and it was there was foreign um, troops walking through the cities and you uh, with blue uniforms. And that's you win. And that's as mm. much as he could get. But we had been invaded and they were going door to door, walking through the streets Interesting. Wow. I wish he was here to go in a little more detail, but um, the, the reason I bring it up is because he's always had some really interesting dreams that in the long run always turned out to happen. Not to fear monger mm -hmm. anyone, but guys, you know, I mean, it looks sure like we're going that way. I, you know, if, Fred, if I had to make a guess, I don't think it would be, outside invasion i think that the the migrants that have come across the borders and all these million that are here i think they're shipping containers in every city because they've been sending them to every city they've been airdropping them all over the country i'm almost a hundred percent i know i just don't know how i know but i know that they have stashes of u.n uniforms weapons radios communications and there's a lot of them it's nine or ten million of these folks it would be hard pressed, you know. Um, and then, if you just think about the tunnel systems that everybody has speculated so much on over the years, you know, I can't, can't you know, I can't confirm if those are real. But if they are real, these tunnels, these networks that go from city to city, the entire length of the country, they can have staged yeah. armies under every city. And they simply would just come out of the back of a Walmart because these Walmarts, I know for a fact that the Texas Walmart had a tunnel that ran from there to Las Vegas. Uh, that was confirmed. Yeah. The tunnels were big enough where 18 wheelers could drive through them. But there has been uh, many people that have said, and I can't confirm this, but there has been a lot of speculation. And I am about 85%, 90% sure that it's true. that There's tunnel systems that go to every city, edge to edge, mm -hmm. country East Coast, West Coast, and you're not talking about the Hamas-looking tunnels. These are tunnels that 18-wheelers can drive through, paved roads, you know, yeah. bunkers. Um, just food for thought. Again, if, just be prepared. Yeah, if there's if there's any if there anything like the, the tunnels that Elon Musk has described building, they are hardened and safe safer than the roads on top of the land because they're reinforced i've seen the structures that they use to build these things they move with the earth moves the materials are out of you know they're uh, highly appropriate for tunnels so they can handle earthquakes they don't collapse they're airtight watertight i mean like these are serious tunnels and uh, and they use these giant machines bigger than than semi trucks to drill these these tunnels so that you know you can get semis in there. That's why Elon uses them for his boring company. Uh, to where you can get full on you know yeah. uh, cyber trucks, Teslas in them for their hyperloop type stuff. So these things are legit. They they don't take very long to build, and it absolutely makes sense that they could connect the entire country. And man, that is a scary thought. Uh, you know, ten, how many people are in the United States? Something like 300 million or something like that. Yeah. So if you, if you've got 10 million people, um, 
it's a good thing there's there's weapons behind every blade of grass here because at least we'll put up a fight. Yeah. Uh, Raven said something interesting, and this is not the first time I've heard this. She says she hears underground explosions all the time, or at least four or five hmm. times per year, and they can never get an answer from the local officials what they are. And I've heard that probably a dozen times over the years. Um, hmm. But uh, again, it's difficult to confirm the validity of what I said when it comes to coast to coast connection. But my gut feeling is this is for real. If you know of any Walmarts in your area that have recently closed or have closed part of a section of their Walmart, that is something to be suspicious of in my eyes. They closed one down the street from me that I will sit across the street and just sit there just curious and watch 18 wheelers come and go from this location. And it's an out of business facility. Why is there 18 wheelers coming and going? So just, just food for thought. Yeah. I know one of the Texas locations that is a, a, uh, a child detention center or some type of migration child detention center is an abandoned Walmart. They've talked about that in Brownsville, Texas. And I know for a fact it has a tunnel connected to it, but this is why I talk about having a local community organized you know, there's mm. going to be safety and strength in numbers. In my little area that I live in, we have really, really networked pretty hard with a lot of folks in this area. We have um, a network. It's it will it it'll be a it'll be a fight at least if they come this direction. But I recommend everybody have a network, a community that you can trust on, and at least try. You know, it, you don't have to go beyond your means, but just don't sit idle, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah. And if you need a visual imagery, I'll drop a video later on, maybe in the community or in the description for this video. <clears throat> I was watching this video of a, uh, a lioness being attacked by a bunch of hyenas and the hyenas were just swarming this one lion and she was, ha you know, howling for her, her pack and they came in and the pack was smaller than the hyenas, but they were able to save their friend and, you know, scare off the hyenas. So that's an example just in nature on the importance of having your back covered, important of having importance of having a pack uh, to where you, if you take, if you try and take anything on a loan, um, it's easy for you to be overwhelmed. But if you've got, you know, neighbors, if you've got a community, if you've got friends that can come to support you in anything, and that's not, that's not necessarily, you know, even the worst case scenario, that could just be in a disaster scenario. Uh, it's good to have these relationships and these communities, you know, uh, pre-planned before um, anything happens. You know, failing to plan is planning to fail. So you want this, you know, taken care of before anything happens. So use it as an excuse to go meet all your neighbors, um, get their contact information, find out if, you know, they're interested in doing um, any kind of other communication setup. You know, maybe they've got radio radios. And you can set up a, a weekly um, touch base or, or uh, even, you know, watching each other's properties and watching out for each other so that you can, you know, help out when they're in need. So um, you should be aware of your neighbors anyway. It's actually one, of, believe it or not, it's one of the 613 commandments in the Old Testament is when you see your neighbor under stress, help them out. Uh, Larry, thank you for the super chat. We really appreciate you being here. Um, it means a lot to us. These radios, these are uh, Beofang radio. You can literally get one of these for 20 bucks. This is the yep. ham radio, two meter, 440. It'll have uh, the range of uh, a few miles. You can get, uh, it comes with a shorter antenna. You can get these little extra screw on antennas that it give you a few more miles range. But everyone in our neighborhood we have these and we have a pre-designated channel um, specifically for our group. And these stay on the charger sitting right here on this pre-designated channel. And it's good to have them it, anyways, because if something does happen, sometimes cell phones take a long time to connect. You know, time is of the essence when this stuff happens. Cell service could be down. But we all stay on the same channel, and these radios are always on, sitting on the cradle. So if something does happen, 
we are the first to say, hey, look, something's happening. Or I'll pick up the radio and say, look, there's a shady car pulling next to your house. Tim, take a look at it for me. Or, you know, Brian down the street, hey, look, there's someone camped out in front of your house. Doesn't look like a UPS driver. You may want to take a peek. But communicating with your neighbors is key. You know, yeah. even if it's not the type of attack that you're thinking of, people are still casing homes. You yep. know, the uh, evil is evil and yeah. home invasions and all that stuff is on the rise. And again, I'm not trying to fear monger, but it, it matters to me that you guys are prepared. It, it, it does. And I have a feeling it's not going to get any easier unless we have a grand revival. And I'm hoping I'm praying hmm. that that's actually what happens. But, you know, yeah. just be prepared. Talk to your neighbors. Like he said, you want to know your neighbors, especially you want to know the ones that you can't trust. So, you know, get out. You can, yeah. And the beautiful thing about your discernment gift, and I think every person that walks with Christ has this gift it, it, to some extent. Within 30 seconds of you interacting with your neighbor, you will know exactly where you stand with them, even if they're neighbors you haven't talked to before. Within 10, 15, 30 seconds of talking with your neighbor, you will be like a uh, child of light, child of darkness. It happens really quick for me. So it's good to know these, good to know your neighbors, so you can determine who's on your team and who to be mindful of. Yeah, now it's important to know that those ham radios, in order to operate them as a ham radio, you do there is a license required. It's a pretty easy license to get. However, they can be programmed with uh, the family radio service, the FRS frequencies and the GMRS frequencies, which do not require a license. So there's some gray area there that you can use those. My thoughts on this, though, is that the FCC has better things to do. And if uh, <laughs> SHTF hits the fan, um, it is what it is. Because some of the folks in the yeah. neighborhood that have these radios, I'm not sure if they have a license or not. I have my ham radio license, but um, I'm not bothered either way. You're right. You should probably get it just because it's the right thing to do. But it doesn't mean you can't get it. And like Watchful said, you can also pre-program them to the normal family radios. Yeah. And there is a there is a law that in an emergency you don't have to have a license, so you're you're free to use the uh, the even the ham bands during an emergency. Huh? I didn't know that. I think that's yep. actually part of the one of the test questions, and it's been so long since I've taken the test. I know I've been I, I started studying for it really hard when we were uh, getting my system set up, and then I just kind of fizzled out and never took the test. We need to get back on that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, why don't you tell the, the folks a little more about the April 8th eclipse and the significance of it? Because I know you have studied this in great detail. I'm going to cut to your screen so you can do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Here, give me a minute to actually get the uh, slide up. Then. Yeah, so it, the eclipse. Go ahead. No, no. It's I bring this up, and I know we've mentioned it in the past, but this this eclipse on April 8th, it is a significant day on the Hebrew calendar. And I'm sure m many of you are already aware of how significant it is because it puts essentially an X over our country. Uh, a lot of people suspect this could be the judgment of America. And again, I hope I'm wrong. I, I really do. But I would rather be prepared and prepare for the worst, but you know, pray for the best. The last thing you want to do is be caught off guard. So I understand we're not to live in fear. And I know that Christ has our back as well. Though a lot of us have children and people that we care about. So I feel like it's our responsibility to be prepared, even if we're not worried about ourselves at, 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 you know, at the most. So just yeah. my two cents on that. Guys. Okay. Okay. You can switch. Yeah, so what you're looking at here is Stellarium, and this is set to April 8th, 2024. You can see that the eclipse is right here. This will be visible from the United States. It starts at Eagle Pass, which is uh, interesting given what's happening in Texas at Eagle Pass with uh, Governor Greg Abbott and the um, National Guard that's been sent down there because of the... Um, you know, what was going on with the razor wire and the uh, 
criminal aliens that were coming across the border. So this is visible from the United States. This is where the eclipse actually happens in the section of the sky, which it's interesting. So these are some of the original constellation pictographs. So Cetus, if you go, if you look at, you know, any of the records, that, if you look at the oldest records that we have for Cetus, it's a, it's a whale-like dragon creature. Um, it's also called Leviathan, I think, in some writings. So this is a sea creature of some kind. That's what it's been known as. And this line right here that's connecting the two fish is actually a chain. I wish I actually, ha I, uh, I have the images. They're on a different hard drive and I didn't prepare them, but maybe in another video I'll show you. Um, this has been known to be a chain for quite some time. So this is literally a chain that is restraining the dragon. And that should get your attention because in Thessalonians 2, it talks about um, the restrainer being removed. So that's one of my speculations is this, you know, if this eclipse is cutting that chain, this could be significant of cutting, of removing the restrainer. Uh, so that's why I think that it's either April 8th. So eclipses, they either indicate something that's happening on the day of the eclipse. And we've seen that with the eclipse in 2019. So December 26, 2019, when um, the, the pandemic started. And December 14th, 2020, when the Electoral College declared uh, the winner of the current election and also uh, delivered Operation Warp Speed to that administration and also delivered the first jab. There was an eclipse on that day. And then there was another one on June 10th, 2021, uh, when the United States and the United Kingdom basically renewed their covenant to co have each other's backs no matter what in science, um, militarily, and the climate change, and healthcare. There's basically eight categories where they're united, basically making them, you know, moving towards one goal. And then you've got this one, which there could be an event that happens on this day. What's so significant about this day, and this is what uh, Christopher was talking about in regards to the calendar uh, from Mark Biltz, is the, and on the Hebrew calendar, this isn't April. This uh, It's actually the first of the year. So this would be basically equivalent to their January 1st. So this uh, April 8th would be the beginning of the year. Um, on the Hebrew calendar. So there's a lot of significance going into this particular day. Now, 20 days after this, on April 28th, 2024, is the Festival of First Fruits, which is one of the seven feasts that are recorded in the Old Testaments. And the Festival of First Fruits happens to be, uh, if you count 1,260 days after the Festival of First Fruits, it will land on the fest on the Day of Atonement, which is also one of the feast days in the Old Testament. So you've got uh, the beginning of a feast day and then the ending of a feast day. Uh, and then what's interesting is if you go, if you so that would be April 28th, 2024. To October 10th, 2027 is 1,260 days. Uh, three and a half days later, you have October 14th, 2027, which it's interesting because we had an eclipse on October 14th, 2023, that which was seven days after uh, Hamas went into Israel. So there is massive amounts of significance on this particular day. And we don't know exactly what it is. I'm just telling you, this is all the information we have. Um, you know, it's interesting that the eclipse is, it looks to me like it's cutting the restrainer on the dragon, whether that's literally what it's doing, I don't know. But um, these stars that make up this chain right here have always been pictured as a restraining chain for the dragon Leviathan, also known as Cetus. Yeah. Oh, and here's something else that's really interesting. If you notice that Saturn over here is an Aquarius pouring out the flood, that always reminds me of uh, Revelation, I think it's 12, when it talks about after the woman gives birth to the man child, uh, the dragon is um, cast down to the earth and pours out a flood after the woman. So 
this that's what it always reminds me of when I see uh, Saturn in Aquarius is, uh, you know, is this the dragon pouring out the flood after the woman? So, and and to add additional confluence to that, um, just last weekend was the Chinese year starting the year of the dragon, which most of you already know that. So that's just a, a little additional confluence. And I saw a comment that said the $25 is pretty cheap. You're right, it is really cheap. But I have some of the very expensive Yesu and ICOM handhelds. And if I had to do it all over again, I would stick with one of these because uh, the quality difference, maybe 20 years from now, I don't know, but they do the same thing. Now, I'm not suggesting to cut corners on your hobbies and whatnot, but if you're in a pinch, there's nothing wrong with those cheap Bay of Fang radios. They will do the job. Matter of fact, I have a whole ton of them because they're so inexpensive. I have them in every vehicle. My wife has one. I've given some to the neighbors. And if you lose one, you don't get butthurt over it. Like the Yesu radio I have, that's a $400 handheld. So... You know, it's, you know, there, there is pluses and minuses. The Yesu is waterproof where the Bay of Fang is not, but dollar for dollar, I think they're just as good as one another. Uh, matter of fact, the Bay of Fang is a 10 watt where most of the Yesus are five and seven watts. And uh, a lot of the clarity has to do with the antenna and you can get these aftermarket um antennas off amazon really good antennas they will add extra range and i use aftermarket antennas on all of my radios so it, it's not a bad idea especially if you happen to have to travel in a caravan if you guys have to bug out remember the likelihood of cell phone service and navigation will be not working you will want to be able to communicate if you're in multiple vehicles it's just, I try to prepare ahead of time. And when we go camping as a family and we do any type of outings, especially if we go to like a festival, we all have one of these little radios with us. The thing I like about it is that cell phones, they have a delay. Usually if you need to reach someone immediately, you got to dial the number. It could ring for 10, 15 seconds. Half of the time, it goes straight to voicemail because cell phone service is jacked up like that. And then if you text them, sometimes it can take a minute. The cool thing about the radio is you just click the button and it's immediate. So mm. if there's something that's pressing, you can communicate immediately. And everybody that's on the same frequency can hear it. And communication is key, especially in a time of an emergency. Just and you can also, that. they're so cheap, you can throw one in the, in the uh, glove box of your car and turn it off and the, the battery will stay charged for a very long time. You can pre-program it with all the police and emergency uh, frequencies in your area. And if you lose your cell phone or, you know, something happens to sell service, you can still stay in touch with emergency services. So there's another benefit. Yeah. Um, and they come in a lot of variations. So this one right here is the um, Baofeng. I think it's UV 17 R. This one's waterproof. I think I paid huh. 35 bucks for this. Yeah, um, Bay of Feng offers some some nicer ones, just like he uh, has shown you. You can get their top of the line one for still f ten times cheaper than what you know the the common Japanese brand is. Yeah, they're Chinese uh, radios, but the quality dollar for dollar, you really can't beat the Bay of Feng. And yeah. if any if anybody's interested, I can share our frequencies that we have pre-programmed especially to the ham folks that's in the community my radio behind me is always on 40 meters or 20 meters on the same frequency i use 7297 as our emergency frequency where my father can reach me from tennessee or friends of mine in england can reach me or someone like watchful on the west coast these are the designated frequencies so we don't have to hunt each other down and, yeah. you know, when it comes to uh, global comms, the ham radio setup, especially with 40 meters and 20 meters, is the way to go. It does require you to do a little bit of homework in setting up a proper antenna outside of your home. It's not a little, um, you know, rubber ducky antenna. Um, there, 
you know, you'll need some knowledge or want to digest a few YouTube videos uh, to understand how to set up one of the outdoor antennas. But it's not impossible. As a matter of fact, if you go to a, my friend's uh, YouTube channel called Ham Radio Crash Course, he actually walks you through just about any one of those outdoor antenna setups. And a lot of folks will just use a wire antenna, which you can get these wire antennas for about $100 off Amazon. And they're top of the line um, by a company called MFJ. And you string them up from tree to tree. They're about 100 feet in length. And you got global comms uh, after that. It's, it's, it's really incredible, actually. We should add a section to the website for hams. You know, ham frequencies, instruction videos, maybe some That's links great to videos. Idea. Can we add them? We might even be able to add them into our merch store. Hey, can we brand them? <laughs> Truth Burns Radios. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I agree. Um, if if you add a page to the website, I'll, uh, I'll add content to it. I have tons and tons of saved videos for tutorials over the years. Um, nice. I can even make a, uh, a video showing basic operation with my radio and how I do that and actually do some examples of talking to people in Europe and stuff. Um, so it depends on if you guys are interested in that. Yeah. But, you know, communication is, is such a key attribute that you don't want to be in the dark. Because if you guys remember that movie, um, what was that one that... Um, Obama was a part of anyways, leave the world behind. Yeah. The, the most compounding, uh, attribute to that movie is that everybody was in the dark. No one knew what was going on. Everybody was left guessing. And that's exactly how to go down. If something does happen and you'll notice that at the end of that movie, when the little girl went into the bunker, that prepper had his ham radio up and running with the emergency frequency and all the data was coming in from the military and whatnot, communication will be key. And it's it's not as difficult as many people think it is. It just requires yeah. uh, a little bit of learning. But the, the advantage you have right now is all this stuff you can find on YouTube on how to do it. There's tons and tons of channels, especially the ham radio crash course. They literally walk you through how to set up stuff, which radios to use, anything. And I'll be glad to help any one of you. All you have to do is email me. I don't mind getting on a call and walking you through something. It's it's something that I enjoy. My father is a ham radio operator since he was a teenager. And um, I feel like it's a, a vital aspect to being prepared. Yeah. And not even for SHTF, just you, everyone should be prepared. Like I said, just literally having it in your glove box. If you need to call, you know, for a tow, uh, you can do that. You can, if you have an emergency, if the, you know, your cell phone's dead or not working, you're out of cell range, you've got a backup form of communications. And for 20 bucks, come on. I mean, that's anybody can afford these. Most anybody can afford these. Uh, Christine says, can people in apartments use ham radios? Sure. Uh, some of the, uh, I have some uh, HF antennas that are mobile. Um, they look like a large tripod that will fold out and whatnot. I've seen people set up these antennas on their balconies. You can still have global comms in an apartment complex without having a 100-foot antenna. There's a lot of different options out there for antennas. And one of the best antennas around is your vehicle. Uh, some of the best reception I get is a magnet mount antenna on the top of my truck. And the reason is, is the entire vehicle becomes the antenna because the magnet mount antenna turns the whole chassis into the base of the antenna. So a lot of folks that are ham radio operators, if they live in an apartment, they simply do it out of their truck or their car because the best reception you can get is by using your vehicle as an antenna. You can get these antennas that it, it just magnet clips. it just stick right to the top of the hood or the, the roof of your car. And it's a vertical that's maybe three or four feet tall. And if you don't want to drive around with it on, you just take it down and put it in the trunk. But uh, some of the best radio transmissions I've had have been in my vehicle talking to my father who's a thousand miles away. 
yeah it looks like this it's just got like a, a magnetic base that sticks on your car exactly. and it's got a really huge antenna that uh, you can talk very long distances with this yeah so it's it's not as complicated as a lot of people think it is and typically folks let the concept and the idea overwhelm them where it just requires a little bit of learning and this is stuff that I can help with or I can re refer you guys to channels, but that's a great idea, Watchful. So at some point, we'll add a ham radio section to our website that, and what I'll do is it, we may even add a blog section to that where I can do walkthrough, step-by-step -step stuff for you guys to, uh, to read. Uh, speaking of which, on the website, we have a blog. You scroll down to the bottom and you can click the link to the blog. Um, I've been putting daily blog updates, um, stuff about relationship with Christ or prayer or whatnot, but in a nutshell, we would really love to have everybody's interactment there. Uh, being able to connect with you is important to us. For me, I'm a, I'm a community guy. I like the involvement with everybody and their dedication to us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. and, and we'll probably, we'll probably, um, as soon when we get a little bit more organized, I want to start putting like all of our show notes. So, cause we reference a lot of like videos and resources, uh, the way the website is designed is I'm trying to make each one of the videos kind of self-contained. So you should be able to, we're, we'll put the, get to the point where we'll put all the show notes in the uh, description for the video and then also on the website. So you'll be able to go there and any links that we mention, we'll, because right now I just have to post them in the um, in the community because we, we're not getting them always in the description. So I want to make sure that I when, when we mention something that we actually get them into a central, consistent location. So we're still working on that stuff. Uh, you know, all of this stuff is a massive undertaking. There's so many details. I, I haven't even gotten to putting our links for Facebook and YouTube and stuff on there just because we're just dealing with so many little things. But it's all coming, all in due time. You know, we've got exciting things that we're building. The website is coming along. This thing's going to be a powerhouse for people. We're uh, we're looking, we're exploring bringing in other channels. Uh, Dr. Sean Greener has expressed interest in doing his own channel. So, we, you know, you'd be able to find his content on there. He's got books that he's written that he wants to narrate. And he's got sermons that he's taught throughout the year that he, that he wants to uh, make available on YouTube. So... We're going to we're going to turn that thing into a powerhouse for, you know, anything that you could if any need that you may have uh, or any information that you want to know, you know, what's the current information, uh, you know, things with with uh, end time events and new information being revealed, things are changing. And it's, it, you know, it might be nice to have a central location where you can uh, follow up on, you know, what the current understanding is uh, in, in regards to where we at, where we're at and what's going on. So, and then also a resource for, you know, how to prep, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, try and do it in a way that it's really simple for people who maybe aren't technical and at the same time also have access to more complicated information for the advanced users. Yeah. So in a nutshell, guys, we just want to help everybody. Doesn't mean we have to yep. harp on a certain topic, uh, though. I've had a lot of requests from many of our viewers to talk about this. So I saw Jake say the broadcast is about the use of radios, maybe, maybe for the last 10 <laughs> minutes, but we've had a lot of people ask for this. And Al said, and two other people asked if we could uh, have some Bible reading together. We're working on that being an option right now. It's just, we're not fully set up yet to offer that. It, we do plan on doing um, some Bible study options with our website where we'll have you know, a uh, pre-designated time with maybe Dr. Sean or myself or Watchful or another volunteer where we'll actually have Bible studies where people can sign up for it. Just all in due time. It's, um, like Watchful said, it's, it's an undertaking to get organized. And if we're going to commit to something and say that we offer it, we want to be able to do it without any excuses on why that it has not happened. So... Yeah. Just as we grow and in due time, uh, we will do that stuff. So just bear with us as our growing pains. I'm curious what he means by Bible reading. Are you talking about adding more Bible study into the live show uh, or in general? Because uh, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out the pattern. I know that we <laughs> love having the guests, guests on. That's an absolute uh, for sure thing. Uh, the variety of guests, but we're all, you know, and we're still trying to figure out the pattern of news. 
uh, are you referring to like a, a Bible study time in, in uh, the show to where maybe we pick a section of scripture and read through it and, you know, maybe give our input on it? Or are you talking about more like Bible studies to where you have access to resources? I think it'd be great so if we, we could go a lot. Of, we could go a lot of different ways with that. You got to be more specific. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing a, a show where we just picked a chapter and read the Bible. But what about, can we go through the 613 commandments in the Old Testament? <laughs> just like maybe pick one or two. Seriously, most people aren't aware of the, uh, the commandments that are in the Old Testament. Most people are aware of primarily the 10 commandments, but there's 613 of them talked about uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, hmm. Even if we just pick one. Or two. I mean, 613. If you want to get through them all in a year, you got to pick at least two. Uh, but if we want to get through them even sooner, maybe we pick like five or something like that and just go through five commandments uh, and then maybe pick a section of scripture that's relevant to the topic. That would be awesome. That would be. Um, I got a new Bible for those of you who are Bible freaks like me. I, I don't know why I have had this urge lately. I've already mentioned that, but I have fell in love with a Bible manufacturer that Stephanie and our, and our group turned me on to. It's um, a company called um, Humble Lamb. They make the absolute most beautiful books and their text and their paperwork is just incredible. The, the detail wow. and all of the fine details is just and it's just awesome. And you can get them in different colors, uh, different sizes. I've never seen anything to this quality. I've literally fallen in love with their Bibles. I think I own every one of the th that they offer now. My wife says I have a problem. I probably do. But I guess you could have worse addictions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, do you guys have any questions, anything you guys want to talk about? Oh, we have um, Brenta, what's her last name, Waltner? Brenda, Wel Brenda Weltner. Brenda Weltner is coming on the show next Wednesday. She's going to talk about multiple raptures. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I thought that'd be a great one. She gave me a list and... Um, I think I, I posted in our admin chat and everybody said multiple raptures and that's a week from now. So if you like something better on the list, um, let me know and I'll message her, but we haven't really talked about multiple raptures or really have any, uh, scripture to back yeah, that up. No, we do actually. So there's revelation 12 when it talks about the, the woman who gives birth to the man child, um, that could very well be, the uh, what's coming up on April 8th with the uh, that with that particular eclipse, uh, what whoever the man child is, and there's a lot of theories on that, uh, and the woman too. There's there's at least five theories on who the woman is, um, and and I can find a video on for somebody who goes through the reasoning. I, I just can't replicate it myself. The guy did too much darn work. It's just easier for me to send you his video <laughs> on the five on the, like the, the five, it might be eight, but it's between five and eight theories on who the woman is, uh, you know, from Mary, from Israel, from uh, the church. I mean, there's all these different theories. Uh, and then who's the man, who the man child is, you know, it's, you know, the Holy spirit is one also known as the restrainer. Uh, could be the 144,000. Uh, so um, if depending on who, but the one thing we know for sure, hey, if you guys want to read scripture, let's go read scripture. Let's do Revelation 12 and I'll, I'll read it to you. You want to share my screen real quick? Sure. Um, one comment. Um, are we talking about the Talmud? Um, I, the Talmud? I'm not, yeah, I'm not referencing that. If you are, that's fine. And another person asked no, where I get this. It. This is definitely not a book off Amazon. No offense to Amazon. This uh, You go to the Humble Lamb website, and uh, lately they've been sold out of just about everything, unfortunately. Um, and I offered to try to help promote their Bible, and they had no interest in it. They said they are backed up for two years with requests and projects and are having a hard time keeping up with the orders. But nevertheless... 
I love their Bibles. It's Humble Lamb. All you have to do is Google that. They have three or four different options as far as Bibles. They have a, a king, a shepherd, a lion, a shepherd, and a history edition. They're um, different sizes with different attributes, and the colors are beautiful. Uh, you mean to switch to your screen? Yeah, and we're not talking about the Talmud. The Talmud is a, um, a Jewish rabbinic text. It's like it's all of their... Uh, the Jewish laws that they follow and their laws and their interpretation and stuff like that. It's, it's their specific religious text. We're not talking about that one. Um, uh, we're talking about the Torah and the Tanakh. So the Torah, um, also known as the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the Torah. Uh, the Tanakh is all the other, the other books. Um, so we're talking about the 613 laws that are actually, is it in the Torah? 613 laws that are actually in the Torah. Uh, so there's more than just 10. So I was thinking about and, going through those ones. Sure. Um, and someone says we dodged the Talmud topic. Uh, we won't <laughs> dodge any, we won't dodge any topic. Uh, I have no problem. Sure I just talking. went into that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know very little about that topic. Um, watchful can cover that, but I stick with the, uh, the good old Bible and um, I like the books that were taken out. I like all the Dead Sea Scrolls stuff, but Dead Sea Scrolls Bibles and the Bible Bible, those are my two go-to sources. I have um, one Ethiopian Bible that has every book ever left in it. It's in, in, in their Bible, it, it's all conical. So, you know, for me, um, I look at the, the books that were left out by the early church as a mistake that they took them out. I haven't found anything that contradicts uh, scripture in these additional books. If anything, it just fills in the blanks and holes of stuff that you didn't know. Yeah. Right, let me cut to your screen. And uh, we don't classify one thing uh, <coughs> or another as, as particularly evil. So I'm not saying one way or the other that the Talmud is good or the Talmud is evil um, or, or whether it's inspired of God or not. Honestly, the scripture says study to show yourself approved unto God. I think God made us smart enough to be able to look at all the different information and be able to study to show ourselves approved. Uh, so I find value and I find truth in all sorts of things. You know, uh, you know, people have been writing about uh, historical events for centuries. And just because something's not inspired by God doesn't mean it's not true. I mean, look at scientific journals. Sci scientific journals are, you know, uh, peer reviewed pieces of literature to where, you know, large groups of people come to an agreement on, you know, the rules and laws of the universe. So there's truth in there. Um, you know, likewise, the Talmud, you're, you've got these rabbinical Jews who have been, you know, writing things that they've observed through the centuries. There's got to be at least one bit of truth in there. So I don't think it's fair to label one thing as, you know, truth and error and uh, another thing as error. You know what I mean? Uh, you can even learn. I don't recommend reading, you know, books on witchcraft. But in, when I was in college, they had us read things like the um, shoot. What were they called? The screw tapes. The um, can't remember what they are. It's Essentially, years ago. there's always a lesson to be learned. But discernment is key, guys. Discernment is key. Like the, the guest we had last night. Uh, a lot of what she was saying later on in the program about uh, the lizard people um, and her ancient ways yep. and stuff of that nature, I didn't agree with. And if anyone stuck around to the end, we addressed that. But we didn't want to cut her off at the beginning and take all the wind out of her sail. You never know what you're going to learn from your guest. And you're not going to yep. gain anything by being condescending and beating them up. You, you yep. truly never know. There could be a golden little nugget of information that you take from the conversation, which is the reason I read the Quran. You know, it's for me, that's not uh, biblical scripture, but there is some information in there that can be useful to help you understand your adversary. And mm -hmm. when it comes to different other books, discernment is key, guys. Discernment yeah. is absolute key. And as you grow closer with Christ, your discernment gift, it really, really sharpens up. And, and I think that's why I spend so much time in the book of Enoch is because 
my discernment tells me it's so important. So I read that and a lot of the Dead Sea Scroll books even more now than I do um, the actual Bible. I've read the Bible so many times and I'm not putting it down in any way, but I feel like I have so much to learn through the books that were left out. And I have yet to find anything that my discernment tells me is wrong. So yeah. it's, it, I still wonder why the early church took it out. And that's another conversation for another time. And I'm sure there was a reason. And I have a feeling that it was something nefarious as well, because they didn't want information to be revealed. But I'll cut to your screen now, brother. Cool. All right, so I'm going to read Revelation 12 because this has come up uh, and, you know, we talked about it in regards to one of the potential uh, raptures, uh, but there's a lot of great stuff in here and we refer to this a lot. So Revelation 12, now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head, a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So we've covered this in previous videos, how there's a uh, there's a sign that actually matches this description. We actually have a playlist, too, uh, that if you go to our channel and you look under playlists, you'll see the playlist on the seven seals of Revelation where we cover this. And then verse three, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads, which are crowns. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this is one of the sections where they consider this potentially to be one of the um, raptures to where the child could be the Holy Spirit uh, or the child could be the church. Uh, there's a lot of speculation on what this is. Honestly, I don't think we're going to know until it actually happens. It may have been, it may have already happened because the sign for Revelation 12 happened uh, November, no, not November, September 23rd, 2017. Um, and it was indicated with Jupiter in retrograde in Virgo. So it was literally in her womb for nine months and then it came out. Uh, now, just because a sign happens doesn't always mean that something happens on that particular day. We have seen it to where a sign does happen and something does happen on those day, days, like I mentioned with the eclipses, but that's not always the case. And even Mark Biltz had mentioned that to where, um, you know, he had noticed that when there's um, four blood moons in a row, that it's indicative of a war coming. Uh, so, you know, there's different signs that seem to indicate different things. Uh, a lot of this knowledge has been lost through time. We're literally reverse engineering these things. So uh, we don't know exactly what these things necessarily mean. But this is one of the sections where they uh, consider this to be a uh, one of the raptures. So to devour her child as soon as it was born, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. I think this is one of the reasons why they consider it might be the 144,000 and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Now, something that's really interesting is this 1,260 days is referenced several times. And if you, so this is why, I don't necessarily think that you read the book of Revelation in a linear manner because you have her, this woman, whoever she is, fleeing into the wilderness for 1,260 days. And then in Revelation 11, if you go to Revelation 11, it talks about the two witnesses who will receive power and authority for 1,260 days. So Revelation 11 in verse 2, but leave out the court, which is outside the temple and do not measure it. For it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city, city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. The two lampstands is one of the reasons why we say it could be two groups. Because in Revelation 1.20... It actually defines the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands, which you saw, 
our seven churches. So that's one of the reasons why we say that um, the two witnesses could be two groups. Um, if we go back to Revelation 12, then, um, so that's one potential rapture. She bore a male child to roll all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. And that's, um, where else should we go? Should we continue reading all of Revelation 12, or is that good for today? What do you think? Um, let's see what the folks in the chat want. Do we keep reading, or you guys want us to answer questions, or what would you guys like us to do? We can keep reading, or we can answer some of your guys' questions. I'm looking through the chat here. I have the new International Study Bible that is really good, but does it does reference all the verses that corresponds in any verse. Yeah, that's one thing I like about the that study Bible is that you have your Hebrew and Greek notes next to it. So if you need accurate translation for what it was actually intended for, you can reference that. And not only that, on the bottom of each page, they have dedicated scholars that give their translation also for each verse. And I've found that to be extremely helpful. That's one thing I really love about the Keyword Study Bible. As a matter of fact, this one here that I have, Sean gave me this one, Dr. Sean. This was his Bible that he used to preach in all over the country for years. And I feel so blessed that he gave me this. He, he wrote a very, very kind um, <clears throat> passage to me here. And this was 2014 that he gave me this book. And it's such, I'm just so appreciative to have him in my life. He has been such an inspiration for just about everything. He is just, he's a wonderful man filled to the brim with the Holy Spirit. And he helps a lot behind the scenes. Matter of fact, we get messages on social media from folks that are having, some are having crises and they're, they're struggling to deal with things. Matter of fact, there was someone that messaged me today and she was literally having a, a mental crisis, a breakdown and she needed help. And Sean, just like he has many times in the past, got on the phone with her and walked her through things. He's, you know, he's a doctor in psychology so if anyone ever needs help, Dr. Sean is such a good person to talk to. He's such a voice of reason and his compassion, it, it goes to no end. So that, that's where I'm at. And that's, this is one of my favorite Bibles for that reason, the Hebrew Greek study Bible, just because of the different translations and the, you know, the translations also from the scholars explaining what each verse means. So, what do you go? Cool. <clears throat> I'm cool with whatever. If you guys want me to keep reading and go through the rest of Revelation 12, we can do that, or we can take some more questions and call it a night. Yeah, so um, let me look through the chat here and see what anyone has. Do Chris and Watchful see this? What do we need to see, Tim? Um, uh, the chat's flying pretty fast. What am I missing? Um, to do, to do, to do. Tim, what am I missing? I'm trying to see what you're referencing in the chat. Do you guys want Watchful to keep reading or do you want us to answer questions? Uh, I got a let's a read couple. from Paul. I see a... Yeah, I see a let's read and I also see who is the multitude in Revelation 7. I'm so glad you asked that. Go back to my screen. <laughs> okay, got it. So here's one of the theories. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. If you skip over to Revelation 14, um, we're actually let's start in 7. So this is the one of the theories is that the, the male child is 144,000. 
And I've said that I think Revelation 7 is a, a parenthetical um, scripture, meaning that it doesn't take place at the point in time where it's uh, listed. So if you go in Revelation 6, that's where it talks about the first six seals, and then it stops at seal six. And you got seal seven, what it, which talks about uh, the sealing of the 144,000. And it says, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. The reason I say I think this is a parenthetical verse is because you have this qualifying statement that talks about before the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth um, start to hurt the earth. <clears throat> to me, this reminds me of seal number one two, three, and four, because we've looked at the living creatures being the constellations. They are on the four corners of the earth. Matter of fact, here is uh, a reminder of that right here. So if you look at this slideshow, this is from our uh, Seven Seals presentation. So when you're looking down at the North Pole um, and you've got the Aurora Borealis here, which is the green rainbow, you've got Leo the lion. So the lion, the calf, the face of a man and the flying eagle. Um, those could be the angels that stand on the four corners. I don't know. Um, that's just a guess. But the fact that there's four of them, the fact that they're standing on the corners makes me think that this could be referring to them. So to me, this sounds like um, it's it's going back in time as a parenthetical phrase to when the start of the seals being opened, which uh, is don't harm the don't harm the earth until the 144,000 have been sealed. So, one way of looking at this, and this is what, where my current opinion is, is that the 144,000 have been being sealed since seal number one was opened. And this is just a parenthetical phrase. This happens throughout the scripture in multiple places. I encourage you to read uh, Genesis uh, one, two, and three, and you'll see the exact same thing happen to where. Genesis 1 will give you an overview of the seven days, and then Genesis 2 will talk about what happened on day three, do two, four, stuff like that. But it doesn't say that it happened on you know, day four. It says before there was any um, plants that had grown, you know, stuff like that. So same kind of mechanism that's here. It's kind of a parenthetical phrase, which is like a flashback. Um, so I think that's what's happening here. So and then so you had asked about the great multitude. So the reason I gave you all of that history is saying, I think this has been happening since December of 2019. And then, so you have the 140. So if we assume that the 144,000 have been sealed for the last three and a half years since December of 2019. And if the 144,000 are the man child right here, she bore a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God in his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God. I wonder if that's not the great multitude. So then you have the great multitude down here. After these things, I looked and behold a great multitude. So basically after the 144,000 were sealed, I looked and break, behold a great multitude, no one can number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. So this could be a tribulation. Um, it also could be referencing to the woman uh, in the going into the wilderness. Um, it's hard to say. And I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number. See, we talked, we started this at the very, very beginning. We were um, talking about. The percentages, how there's 9 billion people on the planet. And if you broke those down into you know certain groups, you're still talking about millions of people. That could be a great multitude. Um, this could be referring to that. It could also be referring to everybody who's ever died. So, uh, you know, assuming the 100. So if the 144,000 are caught up to the throne, I don't think these will be here. Because it says, actually, I don't even know if these will be caught up to the throne because it says the dead and the, the living will not precede the dead. The dead in Christ rise first, I believe. So I don't know. You can make an and argument the, either way. 
Yeah, the Book of Enoch right. seems to be very clear about the dead in Christ uh, or rise at the time of judgment, which is interesting. I had a yeah. request for you to read First Thessalonians four, which references um, the rapture. Oh yeah, okay. Finally, my brethren, we urge, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you have received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, uh, are you talking about, did they say where they wanted me to read in First Thessalonians? Oh, maybe 13, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow um, as others have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him also those who sleep in Jesus. Yeah, I think they were referencing uh, so this verse is, 4 and 13. Yeah, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. So this is actually talking about a specific reference now that I now that I'm reading this in context. So but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so will God bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And, and uh, Dr. Moen had mentioned this in, uh, when he was on the other morning about uh, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus is what gives us hope that there's life after death. Um, so in verse 15, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So I guess it does say that, yeah, the dead in Christ rise first. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So it does seem like, so that would make it, so in Revelation 12, when it talks about the man-child, that would make me lean towards potentially a Holy Spirit, the restrainer. I don't know what that means. But this, if it's the 144,000 and the 144,000 have been being sealed, them being raptured would precede those who are dead. So I see your point. Um, I, there's a comment that says, uh, from Jesus is king, you're false on that, bro. Um, I'd be on interested what? in trying to understand what you mean we're false on that because he's literally reading from the scripture. Um, if you're referencing what I said about the book of Enoch, I would encourage you to read that book as they, he's pretty clear in that book that the dead in Christ rise at the time of judgment. And uh, through our research and all of these verses that we're referencing, if you read them in context, it does point to the rapture being towards the end when Christ returns. Now, that does not mean we don't believe in an early pre-trib rapture. We would love, we would absolutely love to be raptured out of here. Uh, I saw a comment earlier that says that because we don't believe in a pre-trib rapture, we're Satanists. Look, I would love, <laughs> I would love Never for heard us that to... Never before. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not that we don't believe in anything. We would love to be raptured out of here, but folks look to us to do our homework and investigate and read and discern, and we've done a lot of that. We read all this stuff in context and then compare our notes with the Dead Sea Scrolls to come up with the conclusions that we do. It's not like we, we don't want to be in disagreement with anything or anyone, but we're just giving you our honest opinion based off the thousands of hours of research that we've done. Again, we hope that we're wrong. We would love to have a pre-trib rapture. God bless, it would be awesome. But I don't want to mislead anyone to make them think or give them hope that that's an actual event that Scripture in our eyes points to. Now, if you can reference scripture, and I'm watching the chat, we will read that 
in context with the rest of the chapter and give you our honest feedback. We would love to believe in a early rapture. So don't think for a second that we're against that. That would be fantastic. None yeah, of us need- wants to be here for when this stuff goes south. Yeah, you need to understand also that uh, we're not new to this. We, we didn't just decide yesterday to pick up and just start guessing. Uh, both Christopher and I have followed uh, the Messiah our entire lives since we were children. So we have gone through the gamut of different beliefs and religions and understandings. And there's certain things that we that we feel we know for sure because we have studied and proved ourselves before God. And there's stuff that it's we don't believe that it's possible to know until it actually happens. You know, if you have a box with something hidden inside, you know, maybe there's clues on, on the outside of that box that indicate what's inside of it. But you will never know what's inside that box until you actually open it. It's the same thing with end time events. A lot of this information has been hidden. So you may believe you might believe something about end time events that you've been told by somebody and maybe they gave you convincing arguments for stuff, but you don't know for sure until it happens. For me personally, I feel that the first three, maybe four seals have been opened because I have a lot of evidence that seems to suggest they are, but I'm still open to, you know, evidence. So if you've got something to prove what we're saying wrong, by all means, please present it. You know, we're students here. We're Bereans, so to speak. The Bereans, you know, we're uh, studied the scripture daily, whether these things are so. We're, we're very eager to know the truth. We're not necessarily teaching something as though it is truth. We tried to present these as theories and possibilities so that you understand we're eagerly looking for the answers. So some people get bothered by that because they feel that they have a black and white understanding of things, but we're dealing in end time events where some of this stuff hasn't been revealed. So that's why you'll hear me be flippant on stuff to where, you know, I'll read something and I'll tell you there's five different interpretations of who the woman is. There's several interpretations of who the child is. We honestly don't know who they are until it actually happens. So. No, it's a, it's a great point. And for folks that are in supportive of a pre-trib rapture or that's your belief, that's, that's awesome. I would love that. Please let me know what scripture you're referencing. We will, we will gladly read those on the air and discuss it as a group. We would love to have hard evidence and scripture that supports that concept. We're not against it. Just from our lifetime of research and reading everything that there has to been read in scripture and the Dead Sea Scrolls and combining that, it it leads us to a different conclusion. Now, It's interesting that I say that because a year ago, we thought we were going to be raptured any day now. We're like, ah, we're out of here in two weeks. (laughs) Yeah. So watch my channel. I, I make, I, I'm like, it's gotta be this day. Everything's pointing to this day. We got 35 things pointing to this day and it never happened. (laughs) Yeah. Let's see here. Did someone make fun of my tattoos? I I think I saw someone. Chris. Did Chris must have started following Christ after he got his tats? No, I still get tattoos to this day. You know, it's just because we're the, I know I've heard that before that you're the temple of God and that, you know, marking your body is marking the temple of God. I'm of the opinion. This is according to my study and my belief is that the temple is in the mind. It's what you believe and who you are. Um, And Christ has been building that temple for 2000 years. That's why it's as simple as just, making him your Lord and believing that God raised him from the dead uh, is because that's where the temple is, is, you know, when you retain God in your heart and mind, you're retaining him in the temple. That's where God dwells. So, yeah, you know, your body is a clay vessel. Yeah. I'm actually having a design for one that's going to go on my back. That is going to be something biblical in a way, but it's not going to be any type of uh, idol. So I have to carefully put that together because uh, I don't want to misrepresent his name. But every one of my tattoos has significance. My children's name, my, you know, my work with cameras and film. All my children are scattered all over my body. My wedding date. Everything has a purpose that's on me. It tells my story from beginning to end. So, yeah, I plan on getting more. Sorry if that offends you. It I have is tattoos what it, too, so. <laughs> it is what it is. 
And I, I won't stop unless I hear a clear message from God that says, please stop getting tattoos. That would be really the only person I would listen to. But I haven't ever felt that way uh, about getting ink. So that's just my take. Does it mean I'm right? But uh, I got my d- I got one just as a reminder, because I have a tendency to not be aggressive sometimes when I should be aggressive. So I got my tattoos remind me. Um, to keep God first and to when I feel like backing down from something that he's telling me not to back down from to not. So mine, mine are reminders to um, be the servant who I've dedicated myself to be. Uh, so, go uh, somebody had asked about somebody had asked something that, that, that um, Christopher has e- even considered too. Um, I think I may have lost it. It was JCCFPV had asked, how can the seals be opened if the Antichrist hasn't been revealed? So that's one interpretation of the seals being opened. We've covered this a couple times before. Um, Christopher kind of leans that way, uh, but keep in mind that the seal number one does not specifically say the Antichrist is the one riding on the horse in white. So um, the evidence that I presented is what convinces me that, you know, please study for yourself and, you know, uh, prove that to yourself. It's perfectly acceptable for um, you to, you know, believe something, but the information's there. So we have, uh, the seven seals of revelation where I've gone through what it is that has convinced me why the seals have been open. There's 50 points of data and like 30 facts of, you know, eclipses with events matching up that matches the description. But by all means, if you have more evidence, um, that, that refutes what I've presented by all means, or even if it's just a feeling Christopher leans this way from time to time, because he, you know, in his research, um, you know, uh, who was it? It was when Craig Bong came on and Craig mentioned that he thinks that, you know, the evidence that I presented, and I don't know if he completely watched everything, but he, and his sense was, is that it, what I had found was a shadow of things to come. And that um, the seals that, I, you know, what I believe were the seals being open, he thought was a shadow for when the seals are actually opened. I tend to disagree, but we're allowed to do that. You know, that's that's why it's study to show yourself approved unto God. I don't have we don't have to uh, show anybody else. We're not approved before anybody else. I'm not approved before Christopher. He's not approved before me or approved before God. Yeah. Go cart. Bob says. Uh, we should focus more on the end time signs. Go cart, Bob. We're going to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Um, sorry. I mean, w- we like to talk about that type of stuff, but we we like to have a diversity of conversation. Um, the the viewers in the channel, what they request and want us to talk about, has a big impact on what we talk about. And a lot of what we talk about comes through recommendations from the viewers. And we do focus a lot about on the signs uh, for the end times. But there's always going to be a variation. And uh, hopefully you stick around so you can uh, and you know be a part of the fellowship that we have. In reference to what Watchful was saying about the the seals, we have somewhat opposing views, but I don't I'm not set on anything. Uh, I learn something new all the time. And like he said, until things actually happen, we truly don't know. Um, I would love to learn something new about it, but it, things are literally playing out in front of us. And I'm not saying that he's wrong because he has done an incredible amount of research and, and data, pulled so much data. You guys have no idea how much, how many thousands of hours he spent studying um the stars and the moon and the eclipses and the dates and the translation of each scripture of the seal and looking at the original context of what they truly mean other than just a wider on a right horse. So he has a reason for why he says what he says. Uh, I simply lean in uh, a different direction for a variety of reasons, but that doesn't mean I'm right. And it doesn't mean he's wrong. And that's the beautiful thing about this is we can all have our own opinion. And I think in the end, we'll figure out what the, what the truth was. Yeah, but, I'm pretty sure Christ is going to set us all straight when he comes. Yeah. He's probably going to set us all down and give us a nice talking to telling us what everything meant. Yeah. So it, the most important thing that I feel is the key component 
out of everything, it's just you have a personal relationship with Christ. That's that's really the most important attribute. It doesn't matter if we believe there's a pre-trib or a post-trib rapture. That has nothing to do with your salvation. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, a, a demonic spirit because you don't believe a specific way. The one thing that matters is believing that Christ died on the cross for all of us. Doesn't matter who you are. If you ask for forgiveness and repent and make that make Christ a part of your life, have a personal relationship with him and allow the Holy Spirit to take over, that's the most important thing. Everything else is just fellowship, guys. We're all here to learn and love together. So that's my two cents on that. <laughs> all right. And we went uh, two hours again. Um, you guys have anything else? Doesn't the Bible say not to take tattoo marks? It, it may. It, yeah, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's... Our, um, I think... Remember also that the children of Israel... Uh, you got to read that in context. It's something that we'll look into, but my understanding is um, Romans. So I think of Romans 15, four for the things written for time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Um, I don't know if it's a sin to, to, um, to, to mark and cut your skin and tattoo. I believe that the context of that was the children of Israel had uh, been subject to um, spiritualism and witchcraft where they would cut their skin and bleed themselves and they would mark them, mark their skin and stuff like that. I need to look at it. It's been a long time since I've looked, since I've uh, read that. Um, but well, you know, the- as far as I'm concerned, Jesus said, you know, all the laws and commandments fall under love God and love your neighbor. Um, I put the mark on me to purely to remind me to always love God and to never back, back down. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is guys, so. every one of us are sinners. There's only been one perfect man that walked this earth. This is why you have a relationship with Christ and you repent because there's going to be more than just that sin. It's part of the curse from the inception of Adam and Eve. So that's why it's so important to have that relationship with Christ. It really is. And, And you simply repent. I repent every day just because I feel like I need to. You know, there's, there's, we're, we're human. None of us are perfect. That's why we're here though. So we can learn and love together. And as we grow in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit shapes our daily uh, movements through life. And as cheesy as this may sound, your sins become less over time, the more that you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Will you ever be perfect? No. There was only one perfect person. But, you know, Christ loves you for who you are. He just wants that personal relationship with you. Yeah. All right. And I don't take a legalist. I don't take a legal. We don't take a legalistic approach when it comes to um, the scripture and the laws. Uh, we, we take a... Um, uh, mercy and grace approach. The Pharisees and the lawyers in Jesus's time are the ones who took the legalistic r- approach and they ended up killing, killing the Messiah. They ended up killing the lamb, uh, which ultimately ended up paying the price for our sin. So our sins are covered. Um, read it for yourself. You stand approved before God. My understanding is uh, that uh, there's there's forgiveness. If we've, if we've sinned in, in getting a tattoo, we'll find out soon enough. I don't think it's going to mean the end of us. And I'm not going to make that proclaim it, proclaim it over anybody else too. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I come from a very legalistic background. So, you know, I, I believe I was raised in an Ephesus church that left its first love. And as a result, their candlestick was removed. And I've experienced firsthand what it's like to get legalist, legal, uh, legalistic when it comes to the scriptures to where you, you basically proclaim death over somebody who breaks one of the commandments. So uh, we're, we're reminded constantly that Jesus, because we believe that Jesus is our Lord, our Messiah, our King. He's the one who's going to judge us. Um, he said that all the commandments fall under love God and love your neighbor. So, you know, I've marked up my skin because I love God and it reminds me to love God. Uh, you know, Christopher has done similar things. So, 
Yeah, I mean, my translation of the scripture that points to that doesn't necessarily tell me that I can't get tattoos. Now, again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I ask for forgiveness. And I, you know, not sure what else to say on that. But if you guys have any other questions, we would love to address them. Otherwise, I am going to go be with my kids and help them go to bed. It is already 1115 here on the East Coast. Getting marks on the skin was an Old Testament law for the ancient Israelites. Yeah, a lot of that stuff um, technically changed when Christ died on the cross. I don't know the legalistic view behind that now. but yeah, I don't I believe tried. the law was done away with. I don't believe the law was done away with. I still believe that it's absolutely applicable, but they're, they fall under love God and love your neighbors. So if you're proclaiming that we're going to die because we got tattoos, I think you're wrong on that. Yeah, but bottom line is judgment is not for us to cast between each other. We're just simply here to love each other and learn together. You know, there'll be plenty of judgment in the end. Everybody is, has something to repent for. But if you guys... I don't think anybody I see any other questions. We're going to wrap it up tonight. We have Kip tomorrow on the show. And remember, mm -hmm. guys, um, everybody go to the website and register. I know right now that the, there's not too much going on on the website. And a lot of the video content's the same that you see on YouTube. But we're building on there. I'm adding to the blog every day. Uh, I'm adding to the blog every day. There's a link at the bottom of the website that you can click the blog. Uh, maybe Watchful will add it to the menu. I'm not sure what his plans are because he's the one in charge of that. And he has a vision and how he wants it to look. And he also don't doesn't want the menu to get overcrowded because we have other things coming. But the blog can be found there. Um, yeah. We would love to make sure we're able to stay in touch with you guys if for some reason the social media platforms go on a, a banning spree. So that's kind of another reason as well. But... We'd love to see everybody there. And if not, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. And we're so appreciative that everybody joined us tonight. Hopefully everyone uh, was able to take something from this. I learn something every night interacting with you guys. I, I watch the, the comments um, pretty close. And uh, I spent a lot of time in the comments after the show answering your guys' questions and responding. So... Your guys' feedback is important to me. I enjoy hearing what you have to say. I learn a lot from the interactions with you guys. There's sometimes that I'm wrong, and I'll admit when I'm wrong. But you guys have a wonderful night. You have anything else, Watchful? No, you summed it up. That's good. All right, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Everybody have a good night. We love you guys. Good shalom, night. Shalom, shalom.